To shoot a time lapse on your Edelkrone Slider 1, all you have to do is put your camera into single shot mode, turn the camera off, plug the straight end of the time lapse cable into the Slider 1, and the angled end into the camera, launch the app and set how long you want your movie to be, change the frame rate in the settings if necessary, tap convert to time lapse, set the duration you want the camera to shoot for, and tap start. And that's all there is to it. If you want to learn more, stick around to watch the rest of this video, and of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Setting up your Slider 1 for time-lapse is relatively easy, but there are specific steps that have to be done in a specific order or things won't work. Now, I honestly made this video mostly so that I could look back on it because this isn't something I do very often and I'm often struggling trying to remember the order of things. So just follow these steps in sequence and you should have no problems shooting time-lapse on your Slider 1. Now, the first step is to figure out the exposure. And this is really only because we're going to be turning the camera off and back on again and you may as well get that part sorted out in the beginning. Now, you can shoot in any semi-automatic or even fully automatic mode. However, it's worth noting when shooting time-lapse that if you're in an auto mode, let's say aperture priority, and you're shooting something where the lighting is changing, like a sunrise or sunset, as the camera has to adjust exposure, odds are you're going to see a flicker in the end result. When you take all those images and sequence them together, every time the camera changes settings, you're going to see a little bit of a jump in exposure. And this is definitely not ideal. Now, I have to be honest, I've done lots of time lapse over things like sunrise and sunsets using nothing more than the semi-automatic mode of my camera, and it looks just fine. But for the purists out there, or of course, if you're shooting something where you really are seeing that change, then you're going to want something else to control the time lapse exposure. You can look into third-party hardware and software combinations that will take complete control over the camera, allowing you to do things called bulb ramping, where they will change the exposure in very, very, very small increments, and you can buy hardware for that for pretty much every camera out there. Just do a Google search for bulb ramping and your camera manufacturer, and chances are you'll find one. In the case of the Lumix cameras, there's one called Pluto Trigger that you might want to look into, and we've included a link for that down below. Once you've got your exposure settled on, the next step is to start getting the camera itself ready. Now, you might be thinking right away that you want to put your camera into its time-lapse mode, because a lot of cameras, like the GH5 here, have them built into it. But you don't, and this is a common mistake to make. You see, you're not letting the camera take over the time lapse. In this case, we're going to use the slider to do that. And the slider is going to simply tell the camera to take a picture using this cable. So first step is to make sure that the camera is not in the time lapse mode. So we're just going to set this to the standard single exposure mode, and that's where we want the camera to be. The next step is to turn off the camera if it's currently on. This is actually really important. If you connect the cable while the camera is on, then the right handshake or communication or whatever is not going to be made between the camera and the slider one. You have to turn the camera off before you make the connection or this isn't going to work. Now the second part of this is ensuring that you connect the right end to the right device. The straight end is the one that goes into the slider one and the angled end is the one that goes into your camera. Even though for this particular camera, the Lumix series, the ports are actually the same, they're the same size plug, a two and a half millimeter, if you swap them, it's not going to work. So you have to have the right order. So let's go ahead and plug the straight end into the slider one. And then I'll take the angled end and plug that into the camera. You may have even noticed that I've labeled this end camera, so I don't make that mistake. Okay, now that the camera's connected, it's time to turn it on. Go ahead and fire up the camera. And you're not going to see anything happen here, but again, the camera has to be turned on after the cable's connected. And now we're ready to launch the app. The first thing you'll do in the app is set the duration. Now, this is a little bit different than setting a standard slide duration, because here we're not setting the duration of how long I want the slide to be, but I'm setting it for how long I want the final movie to be. So if I want to make a 30 second long time lapse, not shot over the course of 30 seconds, but a 30 second long final video, then 30 seconds is what I put into the app. The app will then do the math to figure out how long that slide has to happen to make the final result be the 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, whatever it is that you want. So let's go ahead and change the duration here. I'll do a, a short one. Let's just do a one minute long time lapse. So I'll get this down to about 60 seconds. And once we get pretty close here, it's a little hard to get it exact, but, but that's okay, close enough. We'll just say right about there. And then right in the middle of the screen, you'll see it says convert to time lapse. When you tap that, it gives you a start time and a duration for the time lapse. Now this duration is how long you want the time lapse to actually be exposed over. And the start time, of course, is when you want it to start. 
But before we do anything, look in the bottom left corner and you'll see it currently says 24 FPS. That's 24 frames per second. This is important to have right because the slider one app is gonna use that number to calculate the math to know how many frames it needs to shoot and the duration between frames and so on. So if your final movie isn't going to be 24 FPS or whatever it says here, you need to change that. Now, unfortunately, you have to actually back out of the screen to do that. So I'll tap back, tap the gear menu in the top right corner, and then I'll change this to 30 frames per second. Hit back again, and then once again, tap on convert to time lapse. I'm gonna go ahead and start it now. I'm not gonna set it in the future, but how long do I want the time lapse to be? If I just want it to be as quick as it possibly can be, then I need to do some math to figure out what that number is. Or I can just hit the start button here, and it's gonna pop up a dialogue to tell me that the current duration is too short, and it was set to 000, so that's obvious. But it says the minimum duration should be zero days, one hour, and 16 minutes. Okay, well, let's go ahead and set that. I'll go one hour and 16 minutes here. Hit start, and I'm gonna get the same dialogue again. This is honestly, I think, just a bug in the software, but it's been this way since I first got this over a year ago, so I don't know, maybe it's just the way it's supposed to be. Anyway, I've set the duration to the minimum, and when I hit start, it says that that's not the minimum. So you actually have to set it for one minute more than that. So let's go ahead and tap OK, and I'll take this up to one hour and 17 minutes and hit start. And there we go. As you can hear, the time lapse has already begun. The camera is moving. It might be a little hard to see at this pace, but it is moving along, and our time lapse is being shot for us. That's it. If I want to cancel this, I can just tap on the abort button. It confirms, and we're out of there. And as you can hear, the camera has stopped shooting. You can, of course, set the duration to be whatever you want. So if you want the time lapse to be shot over the course of a couple of hours or all day, just go ahead and program that in, and away you go. Now, one final note to make here. If you're used to shooting time lapses on your camera using the built-in time lapse feature, then you're familiar with the fact that when you're done shooting, the camera pops up and says, hey, do you want to build a movie out of this? That's not going to happen here because the camera doesn't know that it's shooting a time lapse. The camera's just shooting a bunch of stills. So you are going to have to bring your pictures into your computer and build a time lapse using a time lapse assembler app or just bring them into your video editor like Premiere or Final Cut Pro and do it from there.